Welcome here in Amsterdam. We are sitting in a special VIP area in here at the DPW 2022 conference. So I'm excited to be here with our guest today and he uh, has been a speaker as well. Um, Matthias from Lean Linking, welcome. Thanks for having me. Uh, my first question is what role can uh, procurement software play in today's macroeconomic environment? Very good question, also very broad question. Let me, let me try and uh, pass this down. Look, I think macroeconomic environment obviously difficult right now, right? And it's nothing new if I say that we have external supply shocks, supply chain disruption, things like the war in Ukraine, and they pose a strain in working with your suppliers, right? You just don't get the volume, the products, the services that you need on time and full as we were used to doing that before. That means the relationship to the vendor becomes more important, right? You need to become customer of choice because you want to capture capacity. Now at the same time, we have a challenge. We have inflation, we have a recession looming. So that means you need to engage your vendors commercially because as a company, you need to protect your investment. In a recession, standstill means regressions because your investments are losing value. Now, in that environment, right, the, a lot of the classical traditional tools that um, companies are using, RFX, requests for quotes, requests for information, requests for price are not working anymore because they are expressly designed to disrupt the relationship with your vendor, right? If you think about it, why do you do an RFP? in order to inject competitive tension into your vendor pool in the hope for higher prices. And you don't want to do that because you don't want to antagonize a vendor that you may need in the race for capacity further on down the line. So we need new technology. We need things like supplier scouting, supplier relationship management, collaboration and innovation, or also a new way to do negotiations that is more equitable, more fair, not because I'm giving something away, but because it's more fact-based and I find a common path forward. And I think that's the role that software can play in this environment. It changes how it provides value to the companies that are using that technology or software, whatever you want to call it. Can you tell us a bit about the future of um, the enterprise SaaS development? Yeah, look, I have a very particular opinion as a solution provider who's developing software. I think. For me, it's predominantly two things, right? It's number one, you need either data and a strong set of data to drive insights and actionable advice from, and or you need, you need content, right? You need subject matter expertise that is built into your product so that you can provide guided decision-making. That's what users need today, right? They don't necessarily need only automation or AI, they need AI augmentation and automation support so that they have more time to drive insights and make better decisions. And I think that's what, um, that's what the future of uh, software development is going to provide that support rather than quote unquote just road automation. Exactly. It's not only about numbers, but about content. But can you elaborate a little bit more? What do you mean by this content? Can you mention an example maybe? Uh, let me answer first maybe why content, why do I think that's important? Look, to the, to, to today we talked about supply chain disruptions, right? And we talked about inflation. There's a third big trend, right? And that is the, the great attrition and the war for, for talent. Procurement has become over the last three years more important. The Queen, may she rest in peace, talked about procurement in one of her speeches. Hasn't happened in 100 years before. So. It's more important, it means we are bringing more people into the profession. We are bringing more and more junior people and people from other walks of life, from other career paths into the profession. They are not trained in the traditional ways procurement is done, which is good. It also means they lack some of the basic tool sets, right? And what that means in order to accelerate their learning curve, I need to build some, sub, I use the term again, subject matter expertise into the tool. I give you an example, talk about the negotiation. You may not know what a button is. You may not have needed to know what a button was before you join in, but now you go into procurement, people are going to talk to you, what is your button in this negotiation? And you're like, I don't know even what it is. The best alternative to the negotiated agreement. What do you do if you don't find a resolution with that supplier? So you need software that helps you 
navigate the complex environment because you don't want to invest as a company into large-scale training. If you have large-scale training, that costs time. It costs a lot of money. So you need to build that expertise, that knowledge, those capabilities into the tool so that you can accelerate the learning curve of the new people that are coming in and of the people that you have in your organization today. How can you then achieve a more cooperation between on one side the enterprise and on the other side uh, the startup, like we find here at this conference as well? Yeah, that's, a, that's another good question. Look, I'll, I'll pick up on that, on that content topic again because I think that's, a, that's good to, to exemplify what I, what I mean. If you need content in your solution as a key value driver for an enterprise to invest into your solution, then that content, that subject matter expertise needs to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Likely you as a solution provider won't have that content. I pick up the example of negotiations again, right? The, the, the what, the why and the how of running world-class negotiations is not knowledge that is flying around freely in my team. So ideally what I want to do is I want to partner up with an enterprise that has a negotiation center of excellence, that, have, that has other centers of excellence, and work together with them in building that knowledge into the solution so that they can scale their expertise quickly across the enterprise. And that takes a number of things, right? That is not something that's easy to do. It takes the, the willingness to accept some risk on behalf of the enterprise, because it's always lopsided, obviously, right? You always have the Goliath and the David working together. It requires that you actually go all in. You need to staff a team from both sides. It needs, the, from the solution provider's perspective, the willingness to release the agenda because you will have to redo your product development roadmap hundreds of times, which you normally don't, don't do. But, but I think in the end, that is really the future because that then gives the enterprise quickly what it is supposed to give, scale, and impact and it gives the solution provider what they need a fast and accelerated time to market and time to what we call in the industry product market fit meeting the needs of the enterprises wow thank you for all these insights into procurement solutions um, i'd like to um, thank you once again and wish you um, a lot of joy at this conference fantastic thanks for having me it was a pleasure <laughs> you're welcome <laughs>